All right, good Tuesday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's start with earnings from Pepsi and actual Earth's Plus name. Yeah, okay, it's really important. Listen up. Um, PepsiCo's going to report ended up being the best uh, organic grower. It's got uh, the free to late business is not uh, capable of being crushed by the wars among Amazon, Walmart, Target. Uh, it's a convenience store play, too. There's a lot of innovation here that drives a lot of the growth. Uh, but it doesn't matter because, you see, you don't have any compares until later on. And so what the pattern has been with PepsiCo is it reports people don't realize, unless it just comes down, you know, raise forecast, and that's not what they're doing right now. Uh, what will happen is people sell it down, and we expected that. That's why we trimmed some. You know, we made a very good sale and explained to people in the club that, look, you know, it's kind of run. But then what happens is it goes down because people say, hey, you know what, they didn't raise the forecast. They didn't boost it, even though they did better. And, and uh, that's your opportunity. And that same thing's playing out right now. And you're going to have more on this for the call for club members tomorrow at 11 a.m. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Let's also talk about Amazon Prime Day. I know you tried to buy a Brioni suit yeah, on well, Amazon. They had one. They had <laughs> one. Uh, 48, and I'm a 42. Uh, okay. Amazon Prime uh, is it's something that does attract people who have never been on Amazon. Those who are on Amazon all the time are not particularly blown away by it. And I'm wondering whether there won't be a backlash uh, beginning today where when we hear that it's about 20% year over year, maybe even more, that maybe people come back to some of the retailers. They've been driven down by a lot of short selling. Uh, watch Costco, watch Costco. It's still expensive Costco, 23 times 30. But I think that Costco is the one that was hit from 181 down to 150 when we know things are good. So maybe perhaps this kind of, for a moment, there's a let up in the selling in these best in the best of breed retailers. Okay, meanwhile, Snap falling below its IPO price. Yeah, there's a devastating piece by Morgan Stanley, really just kind of upfront. First analysts to just say, listen, Instagram is going after their bread and butter. and. Uh, Instagram is powerful enough, obviously owned by Facebook, uh, to be able to cut its uh, rates for whatever directly competes with Snap in order to make trouble for Snap. And it also says that the return on investment for advertisers is not clear for Snap. Now, when I spoke to you, Johnson, who was the, the, uh, the CFO of PepsiCo this morning on Squawk on the Street, he's, to, he's also the, uh, on the board of Twitter. He says he sees more ad dollars still going to online. Mm. So it's not like that, that Snap's a disaster. Mm. Um, but what it says is, and now it's of course below the price where the deal came, what it says is that if advertisers can't get a good uh, return and Instagram's going after them, it's become a quizzical holding. It's quizzical to own the stock. Okay, meanwhile, Tesla expanding its service network. Yeah, I mean, I was talking with my friend Phil LeBeau, and it's very interesting. Tesla's been going down, down, down the stock, and it's suddenly the expansion of the service network, well-timed, obviously, by uh, Elon Musk. But then he said, well, look, well-timed. He's got this on the agenda. It's always been on, but whatever. It comes as a, a, an interesting time where the dialogue has been controlled by the bears, um, and this is a dramatic expansion. You wouldn't be doing this unless you saw a lot of demand. All right, Western Digital matching some bids for Toshiba's yeah, The Shipping. club members own Western Digital, and the fact that they're matching the bid is very bullish because what's really uh, made it so Western Digital has not been, uh, it made it so that it's so rancorous is that Western Digital has been trying to get away with buying the company for less than other bidders. If they have got the same bid as everybody else, then there's no reason why it shouldn't win because Western Digital's Sandus division is indeed the principal partner of Toshiba for their flash business. And then on stop trading on Swalk in the Street, you talked about Exxon Mobil. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, oil line the sand. Yesterday, uh, club members know we had a patch. We've been very frustrated with oil, very frustrated with a couple of our retail positions, TJX and, uh, and Walgreens, very uh, frustrated with uh, Snap-on. Uh, it's nice to see oil get a little bit of lift here by a Barclays call, uh, but don't get too excited. In the end, you need oil inventories down dramatically. You need the baker's rig countdown, and you need some event that either takes Libya offline or Nigeria offline. That is a series of things that have to go right for oil to, to rally. So be patient. Don't pull the trigger. Fascinating interview on Mad Money last night with uh, Encore's Bob Shepard. Yeah, I mean, what, what's going on with Encore is very interesting. This is a battle of two brilliant billionaires. On the one hand, you've got Warren Buffett wants to own this, okay, because it's a terrific asset. On the other hand, the guy who owns the principal amount of debt is uh, Paul Singer from Elliott. And Elliott's basically saying, listen, you're going to have to pay us more. I think the bankruptcy court is going to say, Buffett's got $9 billion. Um, Elliott's group that he's putting together is going to want to, uh, willing to pay $9.3 billion. 
I think that the, it's incumbent upon the bankruptcy court to say, listen, we've got to take the $9.3 billion offer because we need to have the most that you can get. So uh, this is a tricky situation. Uh, will Buffett um, top that bid? Well, you have to see whether the bid is firm. If the bid is firm, I think that they're going to get it because I think that Buffett has said, listen, it's $9 billion. That's what I'll pay and no more. But you got to watch this. This is Elliott versus Buffett, mm -hmm. one, two of the smartest greatest investors of our time. All right, we'll be watching that one. And then tonight you have the Constellation brand CEO on. Yeah, Rob Sands has just done a remarkable job. We've been behind Constellation the whole way. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those examples where, because I own a bar, Bar San Miguel, I saw early on how powerful Bedello and Corona are. I mean, that is what people drink. Also, now they drink Pacifico. Uh, since then, he's bought High West, which is just a fantastic whiskey brand. Uh, and, he, and he's bought Ballast Point, which is a great craft beer. Uh, and he's bought Casa Noble. Now, if you saw Diageo pay for uh, Casamigos, you've got to be laughing if you're Rob Sands. We'll ask that because Casa Noble's a better property. Mm. And, and uh, he paid about $20 million for it uh, instead of a billion. Uh, but Rob Sands buys right. He has some tremendous, you know, he has Ruffini. Mm. Uh, when I was over in Tuscany, we were drinking Ruffini. That's his too. He has Opus One. He has uh, some amazing wine brands, uh, Miomi, uh, mm. Prisoner. And I, 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 I'm always in awe of what he's done. He's a spirits guy, and he's a tough guy. I, I really like him. <laughs> That's tonight at 6 p.m. on Mad Money. And then meanwhile, President Trump to nominate Randall Quarles as the top Fed bank You know, it's interesting. We didn't go over that this morning on Squawk on the Street. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why we didn't is because, well, who did we think that they would get? This is a, a guy. Uh, Dan, when Dan Tarullo uh, left, Dan Tarullo was the guy who really ruled banks. He was the toughest taskmaster of banks. He's gone. It really didn't matter. You didn't think that, there was no way that Trump was going to put on someone who was uh, the, who was tough on the banks. This guy will be easy on the banks, and maybe the banks need this now. You know, there's always people who say, "Listen, we haven't solved too big to fail. And we got to break up the banks." I find it a tiresome dialogue. The banks have too much capital. Okay, and same with the banks. Janet Yellen testifying on Capitol Hill Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, I mean, Janet Yellen has historically, when she goes on the Hill not giving you any real um, insight about number of rate hikes that are needed. Uh, usually just says, listen, we're going to be data dependent and we're going to be patient and careful, uh, but we will raise if we have to raise. That's kind of been her dialogue and I think she's gonna stick with her dialogue. All right, and we just wanna reiterate the club member call tomorrow at 11 a.m. Yes, it should be a lot of fun. I've got some interesting anecdotes from the old days. Yes, and you always get great feedback on those thank calls. You. All right, Jim Kramer, thank you so thank much. You. And for more information on the stocks you mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.